Hi, I'm James McGuire, and today we're talking about 5G technology, how 5G affects the overall tech market, including cloud computing. To discuss that, I'm joined by a real industry expert. With me is John Lenz, Vice President of Product Management at Oracle. John, thanks for joining us today. James, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and to the podcast audience. Mm -hmm. So it, it clearly looks like wherever you are is sunny. So where are you located today? Uh, I am in North Carolina. That's where I am uh, going through the work at home uh, right. shelter, shelter in place. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. We're all we're all bearing with that one. That's okay. It's a lot. A lot of questions around that for sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so sorry. Right, let's talk about five G. We got uh, specific questions, but I'd love to get your uh, your sense of like where are we with five G in general right now? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of talk about it, a lot of headlines. It's coming. It's going to change things. W you know, for goodness sakes. When's it coming or is it already here? What's your sense of the overall 5G market right now? Yeah, that's a great question, James. So um, with respect to what the communication service providers are doing, mm -hmm. um, they're going through phases of 5G um, investment for their networks. Okay. The first phase is uh, what's happening now, uh, which is the early adopters um, are investing in the 5G uh, radio, the 5G RAM. Okay. That's, that's step one. You need the RAM uh, to start your network evolution. Um, and uh, so that's, that's underway. And a number of operators, uh, early adopters in uh, North America, in Europe, in JPAC are underway with that investment. Mm -hmm. Um, the next step in the evolution process is to, to for the operators to deploy what's called uh, non-standalone architecture, NSA. Okay. Right. And, and it's very simple. It's uh, what that is. It's a standardized definition by the 3GPP industry body. And it, it says you take your uh, 5G radio access network and you operate it with your 4G core network. Uh -huh. so, okay. um, so they... They keep their 4G core network in place, make some enhancements to it, and it, that 4G network can serve both the 4G RAN and the 5G RAN. Because certainly 4G and 5G are going to be coexisting for quite a while now. They will be. They will be. Yeah. They'll be uh, an it's a very much an evolutionary um, approach, not right. a cutover. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, they're in that phase of, of deploying non standalone architecture. The next step in the evolution to 5G is the deployment of what's called standalone architecture, where you have a, the 5G RAN and now a 5G core network. And um, that is in, is, it's in its uh, infancy. Um, the mm -hmm. early adopter customers in uh, North America, JPAC, Europe, they're uh, issuing RF, uh, RFPs. Um, and uh, the suppliers are responding to those RFIs and RFPs to compete for that uh, standalone architecture uh, deployment. Okay. Um, so that's going, that's just on its uh, uptick. There are a couple of uh, leaders out there that are through their first round of RFP and they're uh, starting to build those standalone architecture networks for launch. Mm -hmm. um, later this year, early next year. Um, but that's really the, the, the leaders. Then, then there'll be the fast followers, um, you know, the next tier down of operators, and then eventually the mass market. Right. Um, but the mass market spend on that is still um, uh, a little bit uh, into the future. Um, what's, what's the timeline on the mass market? I mean, we're talking like 12 months, 36 months. What, what's your sense? Yeah, mass market's probably more like in the uh, calendar year 2022 timeframe. Okay, all right. So kind of toward the end of, um, through 2021 will be the rest of the early adopters and the fast followers, and then into 2022 and beyond will be more of the mass market ramp up. Ramp up. Do, do you anticipate the, the, the current COVID situation uh, impacting the, the, the nature of the ramp up or not necessarily? You know, it's an interesting question. Um, you know, I think uh, people are still, uh, people in the industry are tr still trying to figure out what, what the impact will be. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
you know, as the, I think as we all assess the macroeconomic impact of the COVID uh, economic shutdowns and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and pauses, right. um, I think on the other end of it, we'll get a better assessment. What I can tell you, um, because I see it in the, I'm in the, we're in the front lines of the RFPs. Right. Uh, it has not slowed down the RFIs and RFPs from the early adopters. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah, they're pushing ahead. We, they're pushing ahead. We and our uh, competitors are competing for the business. We're in lab trials. We're in early uh, build out uh, preparations. So those early adopters who started before the, the COVID um, impact, um, they're pressing. They're pressing forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.